Hi guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Today we are going to solve a problem and this problem is on deflection. And we're going to solve this deflection problem by integration, okay? So there's two ways to solve integration problems. Well, actually, there's more than two ways, but in this course, particularly, we're gonna only deal with two ways of solving integration problems. We already did superposition and we are going to do integration now. So. As we know, by this point, deflection is the measurement of the bending of the beam, and that relies on a number of different factors. It relies on the number of external forces or moments on the beam, the distance of those forces or moment, uh, forces from the reactions, as well as the material, the elast uh, modulus of elasticity of the beam, the material being used, the moment of inertia, etc. Okay? So when we're solving a deflection by integration, question, essentially it's, it's very similar to solving the reactions of a beam and then cutting it for your bending moment diagram, in that we are going to first find the reactions and then we're going to cut it here and we're going to cut it here, okay, and what we're going to do is derive the equations for the different sections of the beam, okay, because the deflection here isn't going to be the same as the deflection here, because the loadings are different, okay. So we need to take into consideration both sections of the beams, okay? And we'll go through it step by step. So the first step that we're going to undertake is gonna be finding the reactions, okay? I'm gonna do it nice and quick just because we've already done this before and I don't wanna to waste too much time, okay? So let's take the moment about A, all right? And we're going to take counterclockwise as our positive direction. Resolving this distributed load so 60 times 20, we have 1200 kilonewtons, okay? And that's going to act at the center of the beam, which is 10 meters from each side, okay? We have that force, which is negative. So I'll just write it out the long way. So you know how we got that 1200 there. It's gonna be a negative sign, 1200. And then the distance is 10, okay? Next, we have this free moment here at the end of the beam, point C. So we're just gonna take that as is, okay? And finally, we have this reaction here, which is 15 meters, and that is acting in the positive direction. Okay, and that's all equal to zero, right? Summation moments equal zero. And if we calculate that and solve for by, we are going to get a value of 802 kilonewtons upwards, okay? So that means that the direction that we assumed up is correct. Let's do the exact same thing for the moment at B. So we have that same 1200 kilonewton force down. Now, okay, so this is 10 meters, right? From here to here. And that means it's not to scale, sorry guys, but this is five meters, right? Okay, so let's, which direction is it? It's in the positive direction, okay? and. Let's do that. Next, we still have that moment here. Let's include it, okay? And we have, finally, our reaction at A times the distance to B equals zero, all right? And if we calculate that out, we're going to get that AY is equal to 398 kilonewtons, okay? And the reason, again, I, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but the reason why we didn't take the summation of the forces in the y-axis after finding the moment in A is that we don't know if our answer is correct when we do that, okay? This way, when we take both moments, we can add these two together, okay? And as you can see, 802 plus 398 will equal 1200 kilonewtons. And these two need to equal the total summation of external forces, not the moment, but just the forces, okay? And it does here, so that means that our Reactions are correct, okay? Really great trick for a tip, guys. Don't take the summation of the forces and why. That's just not the right way to do it for a test situation. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next video and we'll start deriving the equations for the different sections of the beam.